our next vehicle in at number two is a mighty warrior tank. The consensus among experts is that this is the best battle tank fighting in the world today. Its technology takes tank warfare into the digital age. But this is combined with a mighty engine, serious armor, and massive gun. Here you have a really first class fighting machine. You have a 120 millimeter smoothbore gun that during Desert Storm was killing T-72s at 4,750 meters and going through 12 feet of sand at that. You have a vehicle that has a 1,500 horsepower engine. The M1 Abrams tank, first produced in 1983. Top speed 42 miles per hour. Range is 289 miles. Textron AGT 1500 gas turbine engine gives Abrams a power to weight ratio of 26.64 horsepower per ton. Armor thickness classified. Primary armament is a 120 mm M256 gun. The Abrams is one of the few examples I can think of where there were no compromises as such. That vehicle is first-rate all the way around. In 1991, a first-rate vehicle was exactly what was needed. 4,500 Iraqi tanks were lined up against 3,500 coalition tanks. This would be the biggest tank battle of all time. In Saddam's words, the mother of all battles. However, Things did not go as planned for the Iraqi dictator. U.S. forces eventually claimed to have destroyed 3,847 of Saddam's tanks. And 2,000 of these kills were claimed by the M1 Abrams. Only four Abrams tanks were lost to enemy fire. The Abrams armor is, in places, up to a foot thick. The armor accounts for half of the weight of the fully laden tank. Each machine is held together by one and a half miles of welding, and the welds alone weigh half a ton. This solid armor has saved the lives of countless tank crews, both in the first Gulf War and in 2003's Operation Iraqi Freedom. There's the story of the American soldier when they made the run into Baghdad where the vehicle got hit and it started burning while well, they couldn't get the driver out. And they had to come back a couple hours later to, to re actually remove his body. But when they opened up his hatch, there he was. And he's sort of like, you know, what took you so long getting them? Each Abrams carries 40 120 millimeter rounds and has a 270 mile cruising range. The Abrams is a key player on the electronic battlefield this is the first fully digital tank. This vehicle is an armored supercomputer on tracks. Each Abrams tank has got a computer on it that's in a wireless link with all of the other tanks in the unit. All those computers talk to each other, and if one tank sees a target, another tank can shoot at it. But despite the technological wizardry, the Abrams is not a tank without weaknesses. When it comes to describing the M1 Abrams tank, it's not so much what I like about it as what I don't like about it. I don't like the gas turbine engine that guzzles fuel. You need a huge logistic chain to support the M1. I don't like its design. Abrams has got excellent optics, excellent target acquisition packages. It's got great data links. There are a lot of really good things about the Abrams, but if you have to support it in a theater of operations with a great parade of soft-skinned fuel trucks in order to feed that big, thirsty gas turbine engine that it's got underneath it, then no matter how good it is, you're, you're, uh, you're fighting with one foot in a bucket when you bring Abrams to war. The M1 scores full marks for firepower and armor it is the match of any of today's top tanks. 
the gas-guzzling engine loses points for mobility, though it still scores way above average. For its production rating, the score is low. This is a monstrously complex tank, expensive and difficult to engineer. Arguably the deadliest tank of all time, it gets full marks for fear factor. The M1 Abrams, the second greatest tank of all time.